Some people have asked me to share my thoughts on Aaron Stoner's latest final verdict video in the Missy Beavers case. In his video, he zoomed in on the Nissan Altima driving around the SWFA gun store about a half hour prior to a break-in at the church where Missy was killed. He zoomed in on the car's driver's side window, and he thinks that he can see a face looking out. He spent a lot of time looking online for mugshots in Texas until he found a man whose features match the features that he thinks he sees looking out of the Nissan Altima. This captured photo is after the suspect was arrested in California in November 2016, seven months after Missy's murder. He had been a fugitive from Texas for a few years after he had been arrested for some violent cases and had been in prison. Then he did some detailed research and investigating, trying to find out more about this guy. I admire the amount of time, effort, and unique approaches that Aaron takes to his cases that he shows on his YouTube channel, but I do not think that he is right about this suspect, even though he presented a very convincing argument and evidence. If it turns out that he is correct naming the suspect, I would be thrilled to be proven wrong. I did plenty of analyzing and speculations in my nearly five-hour Missy Beavers video and my Delphi videos that anybody can pick apart, so I'm not criticizing Aaron, I'm just offering a different perspective. Did that sound sincere? <laughs> I'm kidding, it was sincere. In agreement with Aaron's conclusion, it does make sense that someone up to no good would step on the car's brake to slow down as they look out the driver's side window to focus on something at SWFA. If I saw this quote-unquote face in the window during my research into Missy Beaver's case, I probably also would have fallen down that rabbit hole similar to Aaron. But I think his use of an edited photo to create a sketch and then look at mugshots to match up is kind of pushing it a little too far, even though the similarities between the face in the window and his suspect and his history could make sense. Against Aaron's conclusions, when this video was taken, it was raining very heavily, it was at night, and the car is about 100 feet or more away from the camera. It's way too blurry to see details in the car. In Aaron's video, he said no one is allowed to copy or share his content, so I'm not allowed to show it here. This is my screenshot since I'm not allowed to use his, but it's around the same time. The top of the driver's side door and the roof looks kind of warped and not clear. So that would indicate a face would also be warped and not clear. Also, the two side door windows appear to have some kind of like gray glaze over them in the video instead of being all black. But the face that Aaron is claiming exists has black and other shapes that I don't think would be visible since it's on the inside of the car window looking out. So you can go look at his video if you have not seen it yet. But the face in his screenshot is near the top corner of the driver's side window. The suspect would have had to smush his face in the top corner of the window in a really odd way to show that much detail and his large nose. It just seemed to me like it was a very unusual position for someone to look out the window. And also in my analysis, the face kind of is still there, but it's so low on the window that it does not make sense that someone's face would be right there. For my analysis, I did multiple screen captures at the one minute and three seconds mark. And in some of those screenshots, it did not even show any resemblance of a face. I would think someone's face would show for longer instead of a few very quick frames. Aaron said that his suspect is 5 feet 5 inches, so why was the car seat all the way back when the Altima pulls out if he has short legs? It could be argued that he was putting on part of the police outfit, but I do not think that the position of the face in the window would allow a 5 foot 5 person to also be turning the car's steering wheel with their right arm at the same time. At the top of my screen it says the website bandycam.com, which is where I downloaded software that you can screen capture videos from your computer. I tried to match up around the same time where Aaron took his screen captures from the SWFA footage and it seems to be around one minute and three seconds. So I copied that and I pasted it into my Photoscape X photo software and then I zoomed in and I cropped it even more using window snipping tool. And then I pasted it again and zoomed in. And it does look like there is some kind of markings there on that window on the right side. So I tried to edit it to bring out those features even more. And you can see the mouth just got bigger there. <laughs> the face in Aaron's screen capture is a lot higher in the window. And here it has somewhat similar features, but it's so low on the window that it does not make sense to me that somebody would be looking out and that it could be seen from this camera so far away at night in the rain. But I just don't think it really is somebody looking out the window. It kind of looks like that photo where some people think they see a face on the planet Mars. 
I tried a variety of different settings to try and bring it out. So Aaron took that similar screenshot and then hired somebody to make a full face sketch and then spent hours and hours looking on the internet for similar mugshots of prisoners in Texas until he found similar facial features. Most of you have seen my 4 hour and 51 minute video on Missy Beavers or You Fell Asleep. Aaron Stoner really believes that the killer had a prosthetic leg, but in this photo program, I really believe that it's kind of blurry because there's the white light reflecting there. So I copied the black from the right side of the sock, and then I pasted it over some of the pixels from the light, and it seems like a more normal sized ankle. In my deep dive video, I showed that the police lettering was so blurry due to the quality of the camera. So if those letters are so blurry and pixelated, to me it makes sense that that reflection on the floor could also cause pixelation from the reflection of the white light to make it look like the ankle is a lot smaller. P.S. Would people stop blaming the father-in-law? I see a crazy amount of people on the internet saying, it's the father-in-law. People saw the video of the killer walking with a limp, and then they saw the father-in-law walking with a limp, and they're like, oh my god, that's him. I went into detail about this in my deep dive video, but I don't know if people have seen that the Midlothian Police Department said we have confirmed he was in California by several sources. That means Missy's father-in-law was not in Texas when she was murdered. So you got to move on, people. That's not the same body. On the left is the killer. On the right is her father-in-law a few days within the murder. That's not the same belly. Bye. <laughs>